I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Louis, you really must learn to conceal your weaknesses better. If you don't want your foes to use them against you. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. But where are we? I don't know, but we better not hang around. Be careful, Mother. As if me saying that will make any difference. Knowing Mortimer, I wouldn't be surprised if he rigged his crypt with traps. So you think the door is not enough? Do you want to wager your other hand? You've got a point there. We have to find that weapon. What do you know about the Holy Lance, Louis? The what? The Lance of Longinus the Centurion. Oh, that? That's what we come to find? The Lance that a Centurion stuck in the sight of Christ at his crucifixion? That's it. Seriously? You don't really believe that fable, do you? Every fable is founded on true events. I'm not saying that everything adds up, but imagine if it really did exist. Very well. Now what? Well, now you know what you need to find. Pardon? I have to get to the wharf to prepare our departure. Let's get off this cursed island as quickly as we can. We shall come back when we are ready and armed. But hang on. Louis, let's first get to safety. We shall come back when we have the upper hand. Fear not. You take care of getting the lance. It's imperative. I'll take care of preparing our departure. Hang on. At least tell me everything you know about this lance. But I have never seen it. There's nothing else I can say, Louis. Well, you can always go snooping around Mortimer's study. I remember seeing paintings of Longinus there. Hang on a second. What's the matter? Why did you shoot Emily's sister? Do you really think now is the right time for this? I want to know, Mother. Why did you betray her? Listen, Louis. I don't think you've really understood my interest in the Al-Azif. It's not just simple curiosity about some old relic. You tried to kill her. And I had no choice for crying out loud. It must not fall into the hands of the demons, or we are all doomed, don't you see? Listen, I don't know exactly what it contains, but I prefer to be one step ahead. If they want it, there must be a reason. And even if I don't know what it is, I want to stop them for safety's sake, no matter what. Nothing will stop you if I understand correctly. Not Enough, even Louis. If you could see the extent of their power as I do, then you would understand what I'm saying. All right, we'll do it your way. One more thing. If they find you in possession of the lance, they won't let you get away with it. Choose only one and hide it under your jacket so you don't get caught with it. Then run and meet me on the wharf. 
And if I get caught? If they catch you in possession of the lands, we're all doomed. Do you understand? Perfectly. Good. And go talk to Piaggi. He's the one who probably knows the most about this. Flavius Aetius. I remember. He was the Roman general who defeated Attila and his hordes in the terrible battle of the Catalonian plains. Flavius Aetius, the one they call the last of the Romans. He was assassinated by his own emperor, who was jealous of all his victories. But how did he end up here? Flavius Aetius. Hmm. It was cut a long time ago. You could tell by the rough hacks of the tool and the patina of the stone. This sarcophagus is very ancient. I'd say it's several centuries old. Flavius Aetius, the one they call the last of the Romans. He was assassinated by his own emperor, who was jealous of all his victories. But how did he end up here? Lance has got a blade in the shape of a spear. Its blade is in iron or steel, I think. I can make out a rising sun engraved on the tip. The sarcophagus has been ravaged by time. It's sort of ageless, I guess. It's entirely sculpted. These symbols, these grooves, cuneiform script. This is humanity's oldest alphabet, the language of Babel. Sadly, no one today even knows how to decipher it. There's also some text engraved beneath in ancient Greek, Sargon. Is this the tomb of a king? <laughs> Judging by all the sculpted symbols of power, this is really ancient. The inscriptions are all eroded. I don't know what those marks mean, but maybe a stone or an epitaph. Well, we can see that this lance has a particular spear shape. It is coated in gold. You can distinguish the symbol of the fish engraved on the tip, barely noticeable. Well, here we can see this lance has a leaf shape is gold brimmed, and a fish is engraved on the tip. We can see that this lance has a leaf shape, and, well, it's in gold. I can see that a crucifix is engraved on the tip, just barely visible.
take a look at this lance here. It has a very special leaf shape. It is copper rimmed and I can see a fish symbol engraved on the tip. I can see that this lance has the shape of a boar spear. The blade is partially coated in copper, and I can just make out the symbol of the Eye of Ra engraved on the tip. I can see this lance has a spear shape. It is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. I can see that this lance has a so-called leaf shape. It is clearly made of iron and I can make out a sun engraved on the tip. What about this lance? It's got a spear shape. And the blade is partly made of copper. A barely visible crucifix is engraved on the blade. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Great, now let's see what's inside. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. Let's see what we can find here. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription.
I can see that this lance has a so-called leaf shape. It is made entirely of iron. I can see that the tip is engraved with the symbol of the sun. A fragment of amber. The sarcophagus is engraved with the name of Clemens III. Good God! The one whose cross allowed me to enter. Clemens III. Clément III in French. How come his tomb ended up here and not in the Vatican? He was basically an anti-pope. His path to the throne was pretty turbulent, and he had to be enthroned several times. The result of a long conflict between the papacy and the Holy Empire. That was the Pope from the Middle Ages who inspired the Third Crusade. He gave the Roman people the power to elect their magistrates. This sarcophagus is beautifully made, but ancient. Stone is marked by the passage of time, but it's really well preserved. This one has no name. I wonder who it was for. This one has no name. I wonder who it was for. I can see that this spear has a so-called leaf shape, but it is copper-rimmed. I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the Eye of Ra. The Bible must mean the lance which finally took the life of Christ. The Gospel of St. John is the most detailed on the subject of the crucifixion. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a shimmering lance pierced his side, and forthwith there came out blood and water. And he that saw it bore witness, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. A shimmering lance? What is this telling me? The medieval hermetic traditions evoked the idea of using noble materials for relics, which the monasteries often made themselves in order to attract pilgrims. Of course, they had to inspire greatness. So here, we might think of gold, whereas a centurion could not have hoped for anything better than copper at the time. The true lance would not have been a luxurious weapon. The name of the Roman soldier who killed Christ never appears in the biblical canon. Yet, it is said that he was a centurion and was called Longinus.
Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well. I, I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could... not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. Von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lands, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. His nose is bleeding. So, you are looking for the Holy Lands of Longinus, are you? Exactly. Frank and direct. I like that. Thank you for not trying to be sly. You are looking for the lands. You should know. You are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? No. You are the first I've spoken to about it, Your Eminence. Come now, Louis. Are you quite sure of that? Yes, my mother knows about it. Of course, Sarah. Who else? No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? I need it. Why? You won't understand. <sighs> Try me, Louis. I need to protect myself with it. Louis, I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spear-headed lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out, covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions, or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. I'm back on the trail of my mother again. I don't have time to explain, but would you know anything about the Holy Lance? I... Ah, uh, that's good news. But be careful, Louis. You might end up getting noticed. Do you know anything or not? No, I regret I don't. But why not ask Von Wallner? Theology is his field, after all. That's an idea. In that case, I'll try and find him. You are keeping up the good work, I see. 
But I'm telling you, keep your guard up. Everyone is rather on edge right now. You're right. Thanks for everything, Mr. President. See you later. Pardon me, monsieur, but I have work to do. Pardon me, monsieur, but I have work to do. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Johann von Wulner. It seems like he isn't here. The alchemist is a young man. Look, a, a blotter. And apparently it's been used recently. I wonder what Volner was going to write. It's smudged. It's not all legible. I can make out the signature though and leave as Azif planned le Landings Dad. Landing stage. So Volner is going to leave Al Azif at the landing stage, isn't he? What a mess. Looks like Volner was interrupted. Looks a lot like straw. And he's drawn something in a hurry on this sheet. Straw on his desk. As if to... As if to protect something fragile. Yes, someone must have packed something away here. I get the feeling that I've seen that somewhere before. I've seen occult inscriptions like this before. They're not very common. As a matter of fact, I've only seen them once before, around the Lock of al -Azif.
golden elixir. Amber crystals. The alchemist is an old man. A chemistry set. That's not surprising coming from von Volner. So, let's see what Volner has in his bookcase. Ah, oh, damn it. Most of these works are in German. I don't understand a thing. Well, except for this one. It looks like Latin. Longini militis fabulum. Longini? Ah! What have we here? It looks like a kind of biography on Longinus the Centurion. Truly, Volner has done everything he can to get information about that lance. Mm, I'd better keep this one, though. Dirty shit. Damn, that's all I need. Maybe he knows something about the lands. What are you doing in my room? Sir, perfect timing. I, I was looking for you. You were looking for me? Well, here I am. What can I do for you? I was wondering if you might help me. You're the one looking for the lance. No, Don't I... take me for a fool. You are looking for the holy lances. I'm not looking for the lances of Longinus Volner. I'm looking for THE lance of Longinus. The one that pierced Christ's side. You are playing with fire. Don't take it the wrong way. I'll leave you all the copies. Don't worry about that. Good answer. What are you playing at, Richet? Mortimer's the one who has that cursed lance. How long have you been looking for it? Ah, I see. You want it, and so you plan to steal it from Mortimer. For a long time. Isn't that right? Why, you little swine! You're planning to give it to Sir Gregory. You're looking to double-cross me and Piaggi too. What on earth is he talking about? But calm yourself, goddammit. You're the one I'm trying to help. What? What? I heard you talking with his eminence, and it seemed to me that this story about the lances had put you in a tight spot. I was only trying to be helpful. But why didn't you tell me? Straight away! Seeing as I hadn't found it, I, I didn't want to commit myself too quickly. If I failed, I, I would look like a beginner. Uh, I understand, Louis. I thought you were trying to manipulate me. But please, uh, excuse me. I got a little bit uh, carried away. But you can't get ahead by staying in the shadows on a case like this. There are already several of us searching for the Lance of Longinus. And it would be smarter to pool our information. Unfortunately, I've barely made any progress. I'm still trying to find out what the original Lance really looked like. Ah, let me reassure you, we've all been there, given the number of copies there are in existence. It also took us quite some time to discover its true shape. Many believe the central part of the head of the Lance to be covered in gold, whereas, in truth, its center is made of an alloy of copper and iron. That does make sense. In those times, a centurion wouldn't have any chance of possessing a lance made of gold. Ah, that is the perversion of Christian idolatry. A copper lance could not have been noble enough to pierce the side of Christ. Anyway, thank you, sir. You're welcome, Louis. But keep me posted as to your research. We're bound to end up recovering it. I'm counting on it. See you later. I managed to get the biography of Longinus the Centurion. Let's see what it can teach me. Hmm. An interesting passage here tells me that the lance is engraved with the symbol of the first Christians. The fish.
President George Washington. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. The Cardinal's not in his room. Uh, I bet he went back to stuffing himself. My dear Giuseppe, poor health forbids me. Torquemada, quite the contrast. Wow, the fanatical priest who created the Inquisition sends shivers down the spine. Venus and Cupid with a satyr by Correggio. Innocence and discretion and lechery. Giuseppe must love that. Love Triumphant by Caravaggio. Now there's someone for whom the sex of angels is no mystery. Amber. The Lying Girl by Boucher. Here's a painting of mischievous eroticism. I wonder what Piaggi must think of this. Venus and Cupid with a satyr by Correggio. Innocence, indiscretion, and lechery. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. His personal papers. Of course, it's in Latin, the language of the church. All those hours of learning Latin declensions are going to pay off in the end. Mother will be proud. Now, this could be interesting. Mansea Sancte, various representation criteria, of which are shown the most common throughout the centuries, and in different forms. If Piaggi's notes are anything to go by, the weapon I'm looking for is shaped like a tapered spear, and that should help me identify it. stuffing himself. Duke Manuel Godoy. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should under no circumstances. Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. A letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He 
the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. He only has indeed some powerful backers. Madam. A devil's thorn to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. Great, honey. Great, honey. Dear Monsieur Peru, no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Dear friend, please come. Pardon me, monsieur, but I have work to do. St. Longinus. Let's take a closer look at his lance. It is shaped like a leaf, but like the real lance, maybe. How can I be sure? No, this is too easy. Mortimer's trying to throw me off the track again. It seems too visible to be true. Impossible not to see the statue on first glance, given its size. And Mortimer has no interest in making the shape of the true lance so easy to see. I think this statue does represent Longinus, armed with a lance that wounded Jesus. The Holy Lance. How can I find out if this is an exact representation? There's no way of being certain of it. Longinus is holding the Holy Lance in his left hand, and 
I'll bet he's holding the sponge soaked in holy blood in the other hand. Yes, here we can see that the holy lance is represented in the shape of a spear. I'd better make sure I check this twice. It's, it's a work that dates from the Renaissance. And there's nothing to say that it's not based on erroneous elements. This work is an order from Lord Mortimer. All the details have been conceived with a specific goal in mind. Upon closer examination, you can see that even the style clashes with that of most of the other works in the manor. No. If Mortimer has taken special care as the conception and the exhibition of this painting in his study, in the same way as for the Nightmare painting, it must be of some significance. And that is indeed the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. There's only one way of being sure. I'll have to find other clues that will confirm this information. St. Longinus. Let's take a closer look at his lance. It is shaped like a leaf, but like the real lance, maybe. How can I be sure? Hey, looks like there's a symbol engraved on the tip. Yes, a fish. The Christian fish, no doubt. It can't be a coincidence. It, it must have been done on purpose. Huh, good thing I took a closer look. I think this statue does represent Longinus, armed with the lance that wounded Jesus, the Holy Lance. See, this lance has a spear shape, it is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. I must be sure of my choice. I cannot get it wrong. Am I absolutely sure this is the one to take? <laughs> <laughs> 